happy Friday. Uh, this week has been an emotional one. Um, I won't go into it, but we are all here for you. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I can't believe this has been 2020. Uh, today, we've got a great friend of mine who is better and he's the most amazing DJ and I can see that he's here um, to brighten up our spirit. So let's bring Berto in. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. Awesome. Beautiful flowers on the back. I know, and I'm in tie dye. I'm lounge tie dye at the moment. <laughs> I've got nowhere to go, Beto. So you know, I just I chill on loungewear, have flowers, <laughs> and work, and listen to your music. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. It's, it's my upper. Okay, that's great. <laughs> So Beto, to the LED family, could you please introduce yourself? So my name is Beto. Uh, I'm a DJ and music producer. I'm originally from Brazil. I moved to Europe six years ago. Been living in Ibiza, between Ibiza and London for five years. And since 2018, I'm living full time in London. Um, this is my studio in Germany. As you can see a little bit of my gear. That's oh where I God. produce. Yes, I kind of prepared the whole equipment. set. Yeah, it is. Lots of analog synths and different stuff. And that's how I try to come, I try to come up with a very distinctive sound for not only my original songs, but also the remixes that I do from like 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever. The ones that you've been dancing to in most of the yeah. events that I played in the past years. <laughs> Including Cape Town, New Year's Eve in 2016 when I played yes. with Shimi. Yeah. And that's when, we, that's when we first met. Yeah, that's true. So and at the time, time and at the time, I remember everybody saying, oh, the Pingili party, the Pingili party, the Pingili party. I was like, who the hell is Pingili, you know? <laughs> yeah, so to the Albany family, I do love entertaining. And uh, when isolation is done, I sure will throw another one. And Beto, you're going to be like, you're going to DJ for us, right? Yes, I will. So, <laughs> whenever you do, so I will say there's been a number of weddings where okay. like, was, has been performing, and I've literally been at the front, <laughs> a drunken mess, where, Woo! or even also yeah. Annabelle's. Like, I, can't, I love annoying you when you're behind the decks there. Annabelle's has been a really great gig, and I remember you came a couple of times last year, didn't you? Yeah, I, every time you were playing, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> You were a regular, that's great. Yes, so the, the best thing also about your music, like you bring so many people together, because like you said, you play some of the old classics and you've also got your own. So people are like almost taken back to amazing memories or they just forget all the stuff they don't want to want to be remembering and they're just like enjoying the trance of the yeah. music. So I cannot wait to actually have that moment again. Like really, I am counting down the days. So oh, me Kelly, too, trust me. <laughs> How, what so where you are now what actually got you to start DJ like what did you do before and then how did this all come about so yeah I come from a very let's say conventional background in the sense that no one in my family is actually an artist my father is a lawyer my mom you know works with business management my family has a factory in Brazil and I did law school I graduated in law school in Brazil back in 2012 oh, I didn't know that yeah, nobody knows that. It's a secret. <laughs> it's starting to unfold only now. But, but yeah, I did graduate in law school in 2012. And uh, I was pretty unhappy with my life at the time, to be honest. I was a very different person to what you know from me now. And, um, and I started DJing when I was in law school. Uh, in the third or fourth year of law school, I've learned to DJ. I was always really into music and used to travel a lot for music purpose, like going to Ibiza or going to music festivals in different places in the world. And, um, and then I started DJing. I, I learned it by myself, which was an um, interesting thing because I, I never had anyone, no one has ever taught me how to mix uh, with a CDJ. I learned it by myself. Um, yeah, and then basically the first big gig that I had was back in 2012. I was invited to play at the closing party of the Milan Fashion Week. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, and I was at the time of my last year in the law school, and I was supposed to submit my final essay to graduate. And I traveled like a week before, and my mom almost killed me. And it was a big, turbulent moment in my life. And then when I got there, I played at this party, and it was amazing. And the organizers, they liked it so much that they actually invited me to play at two other parties they were organizing in Paris Fashion Week, which was on the following week. So I, I came to Europe and I was meant to play at one party and then I ended up playing at three parties. My mom was like in Brazil, like calling me every day, come back, come back, come back. And it was, yeah, it was quite dramatic at the time, I have oh to say. God. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, I remember, you know, the most amazing comment the guy made at the time, and I, I still remember it, was he came to me and he said, you know, I'm so impressed because I've been organizing Fashion Weeks for decades. And one of the downsides of some parties is that people are so much focused on the clothes that sometimes they don't dance because they are posing and it's all about the clothes and the look, etc." And I was so impressed by the fact that tonight everybody was dancing and everybody was singing to the songs that you played. And everybody came together and just danced and had an amazing time. And this is not something we are used to see in a Fashion Week party. Yeah. And, and that's when I realized that I had, let's say, the skill to read the crowd and to know what to play at what time. And because I was, you know, not DJ in Brazil, I was DJing abroad. I was like, you know what? I think I should try this. I, I think I should give it a try for real. Yeah. And, and that's how it started. Obviously, when I told my mom that I wanted to be a DJ for real, she almost, I mean, she collapsed, you know? She literally <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> I think we need to bring your mom on the interview to be like, mom, how yeah. did you feel? <laughs> no, and I remember so clearly the day I was in the kitchen in my house in Brazil. And I looked at my mom and I said, you know, I think I should really try this for real. And she looked at me and she was like, you gotta be kidding, right? I just paid five years of law school. It took you two years to, to, to just be approved to get into this law school because it was like the toughest one, yeah. most competitive one. And she was like, it's like a seven year struggle, you know, two years to get in and another five years to graduate. And now you're telling me that you want to be a DJ. And then we didn't have that discussion anymore for a while. But then I did graduate. And after I graduated, she started supporting me more and more because she saw that I was doing really well. And obviously one of the main concerns of my mom was like, you know, for her it's very important that I become independent of her and of my family. And she was worried because she thought I wouldn't be able to be independent as a DJ, you know? Yeah. And uh, obviously the beginning was very difficult, especially when I first moved to Europe because I didn't know anyone. But then I quickly, I mean quickly, two years after I moved to Europe, I started having a really high demand for private events. Uh, I worked in Ibiza for two summers, but after that, like the private events started really picking up in 2016. And uh, I started having an average of 40 private events a year. And um, yeah, and, and then I remember the first time my mom realized how much I was making in the sense of how many bookings I had, etc. She I remember she called me, she said, I have to say that I'm really proud of you, you know, at this and this took like a good three years, you know, it was a yeah. good three years of my mom thinking it would be a failure and me believing in it. But from that point ahead, she really believed in me a hundred percent. And she was like, anything you need, I'm here to support you, to help you structure your business. If you need me, because she's really good with numbers and I'm terrible with numbers, but I'm great with music. Right. And also, <laughs> I, bet you're, I bet you're also great with your contract. With all your clients. I'm great with my contracts. <laughs> I'm great. I'm great because she's the one who does all the contracts. So this is one of the things that I have as a policy. So basically, I deal directly with all my clients. And I remember one of the questions was, how do you grow your brand? Yeah. And I always tell people that I grow my brand 100% through word of mouth, which is a very organic but very solid growth. Mm -hmm. And... And I think word of mouth, it's all about the experience. And the experience is not just about playing. It's about DJing, but it's about, you know, being nice to the staff, being on time, you know, 
attention to the detail, be available to the client. It's, it's several things that count on the whole experience. So what I normally do with my clients is that once we define the date, once they tell me, oh, we want to book you for my birthday party or my wedding or whatever party I'm doing, on this date, I tell them the fee, they agree with the fee, everything else is with my manager. So my manager is the one who deals with the payments, with the contracts, with the dates of the payment, with the booking of the hotel, booking of the flight, and I deal with anything related to the event and the music. So the and client so is... I, so, sorry, so imagine like, let's say um, a wedding. So let's say that I miraculously found a fiance and, <laughs> and I'm getting married next year. Um, and so I contact you, like, so will you be like, Marina, what are your favorite tunes? Like, no Justin Bieber, because I know you'll say that to me, but like, you know, I do love Justin Bieber. But like, and then will you like try and like mix some of like, obviously your own and, you know, something that's like meaningful to the client? Yeah. So most of the clients that I, that book me, uh, 80% of them, and this is a track record that my manager did for the past three years, 80% of them have, have seen me performing at least once in their lives. Yeah. So even if it was like six years ago, they heard me playing somewhere at some party like years ago and they already experienced me performing so they know what it is about. Yeah. But then obviously I do a very customized thing for each client. And my repertoire is very broad. So I've been remixing songs. I didn't focus in one particular era or one particular genre. So I've been remixing classics from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, rock, pop. So I go from like the Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix and The Door to let's say Michael Jackson, Madonna and Prince, then 90s dance like, I don't know, Snap or even like Coldplay, Lenny Kravitz. It's very, very broad. And at the same time, it's a very unique thing because these remixes, they are not available anywhere. You don't find this music on Spotify, but only in my sets, in my SoundCloud. So when you play these things in these private events, people are really amazed by it because it's something that everyone is familiar with. So they all know the lyrics. They all sing yeah. to it. But they it's a version it. that, yeah, but it's a version they never heard before. Yeah, like, I, uh, I've got, like, on my SoundCloud, I'm only following you. And that's, like, the only reason why I've got bloody SoundCloud. <laughs> and I'm, like, trying to... And we was, like, you've got that amazing ABBA remix that have, yeah. you have not put on. I know, it's your favourite. <laughs> and yeah. I've got to go through Instagram to, like, buy it because you sent it, like, as a private request. And I'm, like, oh. It's just, yeah. what on my phone? And, and, and it's not only that it's in my SoundCloud, but it's in the middle of the set. So it's not yeah. that you just click on the link and you just hear the album song. You have to go in the set. You need to know which minute in the set and you have to find it there and listen to it. Well, and I this, think you, just said, you just said your hack there. I what? That's your hack. It's like, yes, uh, 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 absolutely. You've got to listen to it. You've got to listen to the whole yeah. set and really experience what I like, what yeah. I'm all about. I love yeah. that. Because I do believe that people want, in a way, what they can have. If, you're, yeah. if it's, the music is too available and it's everywhere, it's no longer special, in a way. Yeah. You know? yeah. So that's the reason why I think it's important to be to restrict, in, restrict it in some ways. Obviously, I'm in the process of releasing my original songs and signing with a label, and this will be on Spotify and everywhere on the internet. Okay. Apple Music, etc. But that's that's another step in my career, which is yeah. my original compositions. The remixes, because they are also very difficult to be released officially, because yeah. you need to do the clearance with the record labels, etc. It's actually very nice to make it exclusive and, you know, rare. You know, yeah. you listen to the ABBA remix and you say, oh my God, an ABBA remix I've never heard before. And people come to the DJ booth crazy, like you did. And yeah. say, oh my God, you have to send me this link. And then I send the link to the set, you know? <laughs> I send the link to the set. I say, where is it? Well, you have to find it. It's there. There's like one hour set. You have to find it yourself. So have a listen. I go, well, and you just tell me which set the ABBA one is in, because then this can be my new, like, dancing around the house. Set. It's the Rise set, which is the latest one I posted, and it should be around 42 minutes. Okay, well, that's fine. That's, that's like a nice run. Yeah. <laughs> and then, okay, so I'm loving, because like, you really are also dissecting, because like, obviously, 
you, like you said, you do this whole performance, but you've also opened eyes into like what goes behind the scenes with your manager, creating yeah. the music, getting your audience. So obviously during COVID, like that, you probably had most of your 40 bookings right over the wedding season, which is now. How have you adapted your business? Look, my, my business, and it's something that I've been telling everyone in my industry, the reality is that, in my view, nothing replaces live performance, yeah. okay? Performance on Zoom or internet, etc. for me, is not the same thing, and that's the, way, that's the reason why I don't do it. I've done yeah. very few of them, but I did not enjoy it, and I don't feel like I can deliver anything close to what is my live performance. Yeah. So we have to, I, I had to come with terms with the fact that this year, I won't be DJing this summer, but at the same time, I am very happy with the fact that none of my bookings were actually canceled. Yeah. A hundred percent of my bookings, they were all postponed to next year. Most of them to the same date, but just 2021, yeah. which is a great thing. I never had one client who asked me to deposit back, yeah. you know, and I had about 20 big bookings this summer and no one, they all emailed me and said, no, we still want to book you. Please book the same date next year, you know? So that, that's a great thing. And that's something I wouldn't have with a club because yeah. a club club is way less personal. And it's, you know, you always have people in between. So you have your agent and the booking agency and this and that. So they just cancel and it's like, let's see yeah. what happens in 2021. But all my bookings, they're still on. But obviously it's very challenging. What I'm doing now is taking the time to produce my original songs because to be honest, Doing a remix is something that I can do way faster than an original song or demands to like do a proper deep composition. And I'm just using my time this summer to focus on that because I want to release my music by the end of the year, sign with a label and then start a new stage in my career in 2021. So 2021 is an exciting year for you. Yeah. I'm really excited. No, so, uh, like you said, you know me, this year you were meant to have 40 bookings. And even last year when I tried to see you, it was like, oh, Marina, I'm flying here this weekend. Or yeah. this. Like, and also you get these last minute um, A lot. So you were just, I can see, I, could, I only saw you at a wedding where you were DJing. Yeah. And you didn't even know, right? You just got no, it was the best surprise ever. Yeah, like, in I the got country. You messaged me to give me like, you know, Marina, I'm, not, I'm just like, oh my word, I'm going to bring more, I'm going to bring comfier shoes. Yeah. Another nice thing about these bookings is also that, for example, last year I had about 40, 42 bookings, but most of them, there are more than one night. So I have many weddings or private events, like I was going to do a film festival in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia in March. Wow. And most of these events, they book me for at least two or three nights. So I have a wedding, which was supposed to be next weekend in Stadt, for example, which was postponed to next year. Uh, they booked me for the whole weekend. And it's a Jewish wedding, so it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So they're doing a pre-party on, on Friday night. Then they're doing like a day party on the hills Saturday afternoon. And then they have the proper wedding on Sunday. So that, that for me counts as one booking, but it's actually three nights. So at the end, I think it's, I end up DJing about 60 nights. Wow. Because, yeah, because, because there are so many events where the booking is like two nights and most of them because the the locations are very far apart i i have to arrive the, the night before sometimes two days before because also the jet lag etc and it's an event where they really rely on me you know it's really high budget events where my performance can really make the difference in the event and i take that responsibility very serious um so i always try to you know, arrive earlier, have some rest, have a look at the location, have a look at the venue, uh, you know, the sound system, do the sound check, what time I'm going to play, who's going to play before, is there going to be a band, is there going to be a singer, is there going to be any other performers, for how long I'm going to play. You know, I, I played once in a, in a wedding in Egypt that I was supposed to play for three, four hours and I ended up playing nine hours. And how did, like, were you drinking, like, loads of Red Bull? <laughs> yeah, loads of Red Bull, because, as you know, I don't drink alcohol, but I do drink yeah. a lot of Red Bull or coffee. And yeah. this, this wedding was crazy because 
The only good thing was that it was a day wedding. So it started around like 4 or 5 p.m. Okay. And there was a band at the start, which was, and, and the band was supposed to play for about two and a half hours. But the band was a disaster, like a complete disaster. And the bride was like desperate. She was like, oh my God, everybody's hating the band, etc." And then she came to me and she was like, better, please, you have to start earlier. And then I ended up playing from, I was supposed to get on, I don't know, 7.38. Yeah. I started at like 5, 5.30. Yeah. And I played until 2 a.m. Wow. Something like that. Non-stop, non-stop, non-stop. I didn't even go to the bathroom once. No! Well, that's I didn't... Just... <laughs> well, okay. Well, when I find my, my, my miraculous fiance and we do, I will make sure there's a nice loo nearby. So if you do have to do it, because you, yeah. like, you are the talent. And you need to <laughs> Thank you. Up, you know? Thank you. And, and just, I understand what you need. <laughs> And uh, Matt, I would love to have a little tour of your studio because I see the yes. people there. Yeah. So I'm going to turn here the camera. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. so here I'm working on a new track. As you can see, I'm going to play to you. Okay. These are some of my modula modular synths. And you know it's exactly what each button does there. Not really. But that's, <laughs> that's where the challenge is. And, and do you play... Do you play the piano? A little bit, but I, I have a producer who plays very well. So normally I know the progression of chords that I want in a certain song. And then he helps me with the composition so I can do everything Ooh. the way I want because I already know which chords bring what kind of feeling, you know, minor chords, major chords, what chords goes with what. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to play to you one of my latest demos, just so you can have an Yay! idea. So, so. Yeah. So each of these lines, each color, as you can see, it's a different sound. So basically in this screen, it shows which sounds are on or which sounds are off. So for example, okay. the song is playing here right now. Okay. You see? So yeah. here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 sounds playing at the same time. So this wow. is like a combination of, let's say, the bass line with the kick, with the percussion, with the, let's say, the, if there is a piano, everything together. And that's, that's where um, the magic is in the combination of all yeah. those elements, you know? That's where I believe the magic is, is like combining all these melodies and coming with, let's say, yeah, it's like, they need, there needs to be a chemistry be between all these elements to have a proper record, you know? It must, it must be the most amazing feeling to create, create the most amazing music that you know brings so many people so much joy, like the impact you it have. Is. It like, is. That is Especially when you, when you play the music in the club and you see the reaction of the crowd, that, that's something that makes you really, really happy because you know that's something that you've, you've done it in your, in your studio by yourself. And then when you put it out and you see the reaction of the crowd, you just feel, it's, it's a real reward, you know? Yeah, I bet, I bet. It feels, feels really good. Oh, well, okay, well now we're gonna get to my last question. What would be your one wardrobe tip to the elderly community? Well, I thought a lot about this question That's before, <laughs> and it's definitely a very comfortable and cool shoes. <laughs> If you're DJing on stop for nine hours, I can get that. <laughs> yes, 100%. The shoes are, are the most, one of the most essential items for me. And I think it's very important, especially for women, to have something that looks very nice, but at the same time is comfortable. Yeah. Because I've seen so many girls in these events at like, I don't know, 3 a.m., they all have to you know, remove the shoes and be barefoot or be like with Avayanas, you know, flip-flops because yeah. 
they can't handle the, the, the shoes, you know? <laughs> so then I'm like, so what's the point, you know, of wearing those shoes if you can't dance comfortably with it? Yeah, so, I feel you. And like, what are your favorite shoe brands? Like, what are you wearing when you're DJ? So my, my favorite trainer is on that Swiss brand. And okay. normally when I DJ, I, I, I wear a lot of Rosso and Bromley, uh, Rosso okay. and Bromley boots. Um, not the big boots, but I have a few Rosso and Bromley that I like. And I also have, there is a, a little shop in um, Kings Road in Chelsea called Suki Shoes. Okay. Which is very kind of customized. They did like only one pair of shoes. Each model has like only five sizes. It's very nice, very exclusive. And they're very comfortable. So I, I always like to DJ with one of these. Okay, I love that. Your, your secret, your secret tip. Yeah. Your the secret Suki tip. shoes is very special. And, and this is, and also the brands you mentioned, he's not sponsored by them. This is authentic. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, but I am so, I so want to see you soon. I want isolation to end so I can dance and also just hug you. Me too, me too. It's been such a long time. That's we need to go for a walk in the park when I'm back to London, yes, okay? Yes, yes, you better tell me. I love okay. Thanks, okay. Have the best weekend. Big kiss. Big kiss. Bye.